In this Ruby programming exercise, we are going to have some fun because we are going to figure out how we can find the first repeated element in a Ruby array. And we are going to learn quite a bit about the hash data structure as we do it. So coming down to the test, let's walk through what our method needs to be able to behave like. And so the first thing is that it needs to return the first repeated element from an array. So right here we have a sample array and it has the elements of five, three, four, five, three, and one. Now the behavior we're looking for is for it to return the integer five in this case, because as you can see, we have a five right here and then the next time that it's repeated is here. And so the three also is a duplicate, but it's not repeated until after the five. Moving down to the second example, right here we have another array that has multiple duplicates. We have three, three, and three, and then we have five, and then we have five once again here. But as you can see, the very first element and then the third element are both three. And so in this case, the method should return the integer three. There are also a couple nil guards here. So if the array is completely empty, then our method should simply return nil. And if there are no duplicates at all found, then it should also return nil. As a caveat, if you're looking to take this code and place it into a production application, you will have to check and see if there are duplicates or if the array is empty or else you could run into an error. So that's something to keep in mind. In a real world scenario, what I'd most likely do is build out a module or a class that perform this kind of check and it did it internally. There is a kind of a precedent in some of the coding exercises I've seen in other programming languages where whenever this is a the case, they return negative one. However, I didn't really want to use that for this implementation because what if we had an array that contained a set of duplicate ne negative ones? I think that would lead to some confusing behavior. So now with all that being said, let's actually build the implementation. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is take care of the second spec. And so I am going to return nil if the array is empty. And so in one line, I can take care of the spec there on line 16 that says returns nil for an empty array. Now, the way that I'm going to build out this behavior is I'm going to create what is called a counter hash. And so what that allows us to do is to create a hash data structure that keeps track of our values. And so I can create a counter hash by saying counter underscore hash equals hash dot new. And then I'm going to pass in a default of zero. Now let's see exactly what this means. And this is one of the key elements I want you to take away from this solution because there are a number of ways to build out this first repeated element algorithm, but I specifically wanted to walk through an interesting caveat when it comes to working with hashes in Ruby. And so if I create a couple hashes, I'm gonna say hash one equals hash dot new. So notice I'm not passing in any values to new. And then if I create another hash called hash two, and I use the exact same syntax that I'm using on our file in line six, you can see that the return value here is completely identical. And so you may think that it is unnecessary to pass in any value there. However, what Ruby allows us to do when you pass in a default argument into the hash constructor is it allows you to do what we're looking to do, which is to create a counter. And so if I want to do something like this, where I want to add on to the hash, so I'm going to say, hash one and just say something for the key. It doesn't really matter. But notice because we have an empty hash, there is no key called something. And so if I try to perform a task like this, where I say hash one something, and then I try to create 
an incrementer. So I say, I want you to, whatever your original value is, I want to increment that by one. And this is how we're gonna build our own counter. So this is very key. If I run this, you'll see that I get an error. It says undefined method plus for nil class. And that makes sense because as you could see, we did not have any keys in our hash. But now if I change this, and I try to perform the same exact behavior for hash two, the one where we set the value and set that default, now notice that this works perfectly fine. And so it, our counter works. Every time that this runs, it is incrementing the value. But if we look at hash one, you can see it's empty. Hash two now has a key that says something and then a counter that has now counted up to five. And so this is the type of behavior that we want. And if we did not pass in a default value into our hash constructor, then it would not work. So this is very key to have this code here. And now that that's in place, now I want to iterate over the array. So I'm gonna say array each do, and I'm just going to use E for element for the block variable. And now I can call the counter hash. So I'm gonna say counter hash, pass in E as the key, and then we're going to increment. So I'm gonna say counter hash E plus equals, so increment by one. So if you notice, this code is pretty much identical to what we just tested out in the IRB session, where we have a cache and we are trying, or we have a hash and we're trying to increment, but we have to accommodate for the situation where each one of these values is going to be set to empty. So we're going to have no keys in our hash when this starts, so we need to be able to increment it. And what this part of the application is going to do is it's going to iterate over each element. When it finds a duplicate, it is going to set it and then it's gonna increment the counter. And so in this case, as it goes through this array, the first time it goes through, it's gonna set the first key to five. Then it's gonna go through to element two and there to the second element and it's gonna create a key called three. Now five is going to have a value of one, three is going to have a value of one, then four is gonna be created, so we're gonna have three elements in the hash, and that's gonna have a value of one. Then when it gets to five, it is gonna go and it's gonna say, okay, we already have a key for five, and now it's gonna try to increment it, and it's going to no longer be one, it's now going to be two, and that is all our program needs to know that we have hit our first duplicate and it should return. And so the next item that we need to add is a return statement. So I'm gonna say, I wanna return the element. So in that first example, that would return five, and I want to return it if the counter hash for that value is greater than one. So let me save this and I'm gonna grab this first array here just so we can test this out. So now if I try to run this, I'll say first repeated element pass in array one. And now let's see what happens if I run this. Oh. I just updated to Ruby 5, and so that's why it's giving me that error. Let me get back into it. I need to install a few more gems for that to work. So let's test this out by just printing it out into the terminal. So I'm just going to say puts, and now if I run this code, so Ruby May 21, you can see that prints out five. So that is working properly. Now let's test our specs and see which ones are still passing and which ones are failing. So if I run this, you can see that it looks like we're on the right track. We have two of our specs passing and only one failure. So the only one that we have left is where it says first repeated element returns nil if no duplicates are found. So in order to take care of that situation, I'm gonna say 
return nil at the very end. So right here, if no duplicates are found at all in the entire system, then it is never going to hit this point. So it's never going to return the element. And in that case, at the very end of the entire method, it's simply going to return nil. So if I save this and run it, you can see we have three examples no failures. And so we have successfully created a method that finds the first repeated element in an array. And we also learned a few new tips and tricks for working with Ruby hashes.